Ray Charles identify his friends through their body odors? <laughs> Did Richard Nixon ever contemplate a nose job? <laughs> what food creates the most gas? <laughs> Learn the answers to these and other meaningful questions right now on that awful quiz show. Now from Hollywood, a town where the moral majority is a minority, ladies and gentlemen, here are your hosts, taking a short walk to the podium, John and Greg Rice. Thank you very much, thank you very much. I'm John. And I'm Greg. How do you like these new suits? Nice, huh? These are definitely not Ken and Barbie hand-me-downs. <laughs> this week, Greg and I went shopping, and one of the places we ended up was a tall and big man shop. This guy came over to us and said, what are you guys doing here? I looked up and said, just setting goals. <laughs> setting goals. <laughs> and one of the goals we have here right now is to bring you a really terrific show with some great guests. We'll be right back after these words to meet a game show junkie and an animal psychologist. We'll be right back after this. Hello again. Welcome back to the show. Huh? Could we introduce our first two guests, please? John and Greg, I'd like you to meet a student who calls himself a game show junkie and a woman who is an animal psychologist. Say hello to Bob Bowden and Beatrice Lidecker. Beatrice, Bob, welcome. Right. Beatrice, how long have you been an animal psychologist? About 12 years. Do you talk to your animals and do they talk to you back? Absolutely. Hey, I was talking to a, a cat one day and I asked him why <laughs> this cat got real mad. The lady was laying on the couch talking to uh, her, the cat's former owner on the phone. cat went over and peed all over her head. <laughs> and what, what, what did you tell her to do? Scotch guard her hair? No. I uh, asked the cat why he did it. He said, I'm mad. She's talking to my former owner. They both say I should live inside. I want to go out and sit on the back fence and talk to the other cats, and she won't let me out. Which animals are most neurotic? I think poodles, because I had this lady came to me one time with a little tiny teacup poodle. And I asked her what his problem was. She said, well, he's wet all over my house. He's done about $5,000 worth of damage. And I said, you mean to tell me you've still got him in your house? She said, well, I just can't discipline that poor little thing. I might hurt him. Tell the lady. I told her to put a diaper on him. Or Scotch guard the furniture? <laughs> Are women pet owners more inclined to bring their animals to you than men? Yeah, but uh, the ones I have the most problems with are men. I don't know why, but these guys are all afraid the dog's going to tell what's going on in the bedroom and they don't want me to come and see them. Like scotch guarding the sheets? <laughs> Bob, why do you call yourself a game show junkie? I've watched thousands of them on TV. I've, I've been to the tapings of hundreds of them. In have the you studio. ever been on a game show? I was on the dating game. <laughs> Did you get the girl? No, I didn't, but I think I came out ahead because I won three cases of motor oil. And, uh, well, I guess if you didn't if get a date, you'd have plenty of time to change your oil in your car. Well, she was a real dipstick, yeah. let me tell you. Oh, good. <laughs> well, tell me, do you think that being on so many game shows has affected your life in any way? Well, I guess it has. Uh, I covered my wall of my dorm room with TV tickets. I carry a little portable bell with me, and uh, I find myself uh, using it in uh, different situations to uh, talk about game show cliches, like, say, I'm overhearing a conversation, and one guy will say to the next guy, what time did you get up this morning? The other guy will say, 7 o'clock. I'll go, ding, that's a right answer. <laughs> Or, uh, or say somebody, uh, say someone comes up to me and says, oh, would you like to go out with my sister next Friday night? Well, I'll say, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. But I, I will take what's behind door number three. <laughs> Who's your favorite game show host? Well, my favorite game show is uh, Jeopardy. Yeah. And uh, so my favorite host would have to be Art Fleming. Well, who's your favorite announcer? Well, the announcer of Jeopardy, Don Pardo. Who else? Sorry about that, Hal. <laughs> Sorry, Hal. 
Can you do an impression of Don Pardo? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's sure, hear I do some. that all the time. Let's hear some. Well, some of our contestants receive a generous supply of rice Cerrone, the big flavor side dish. It's so quick, so easy. The one you saw takes a little bit of perfection. Try rice Cerrone, the San Francisco food. And you and a companion will fly luxurious Mexico on the deal line. Most people fly to Mexico on your trip to Puerto Vallarta. That's wonderful. Yeah, Bob, from Mexico, you have a brand new car. Bob, 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 excuse me, Bob. Hal said that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh. Now, now it's time for you okay. to make your second appearance on a game show. Okay. Hopefully you'll end up with more than a case of motor oil, though. I hope so. As a team, you'll start out with $500. You'll be asked four questions. Each question you'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 per question. Remember, you'll only have eight seconds to come up with your answer. And if you're the lucky contestants that have the most money at the end of the show, you'll be invited back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question that's sent in by a viewer. All right. And your first question has to do with animals. How much would you care to bet? Well, let's go for all of Okay. 200. For $200, one country recently spent $60,000 to study why some male frogs become homosexual. <laughs> Was that country Poland, France, or the United States? B, ask the dog. Ask the dog, B. You sure? Absolutely sure? Sure. All right. I think it was the U.S. paid it. That's exactly right. According to Senator William Fox Myers. All right, all right. The United States recently spent over sixty thousand dollars on that project. Ribbit, Bruce. How Bob said that's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now you have seven hundred dollars, and your next category has to do with the five senses. Four senses. Uh -huh. The five senses. Maybe four, four. Right? four senses. Oh, four senses. Okay, how much would you care to bet? Two hundred. For two hundred dollars, which one of these famous blind people said <laughs> that they can identify their friends by their body odors? Was it Ray Charles, George Shearing, Helen Keller, or little Stevie Wonder? Who was it? <laughs> Helen Keller. That's exactly right. That was it. Whoa! <laughs> that, that question stinks. It really does. That gives you $900, and you still have two questions left. Your next question deals with quotations. How much will you bet? Well, let's go. Go ahead. $200. For $200, which American president said, things are more like they are today than they've ever been before? Sounds like all of them. Sure does. <laughs> things are what? What's that, Th President Calvin Coolidge? Dwight Eisenhower, Lyndon Johnson, or Jimmy Carter? Who was it? I don't even understand the question. Things are, here, things are more like they are now than they've ever been before. <laughs> Aren't they? <laughs> Calvin Coolidge. I'm sorry, but that was said by Dwight Eisenhower in a press conference in the mid-50s. You what have, does he know? You still have $700. This is your last question. Your last category deals with diet. How much will you bet? Okay. All right, 200. For $200, who said, never eat anything that you can't lift? <laughs> was, it, was it Orson Welles, <laughs> Miss Piggy, Kate Smith, or Linda Lovelace? Well, in honor of B, we'll say Miss Piggy. Yes, that's exactly correct. That advice Whoa! was by Miss Piggy. I thought sure it was going to be the last one. I, I wonder if Kermit weighs more than I do. <laughs> well, you've ended up with $900, and if you have more money than the other contestants at the end of the show, we'll invite you back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question. In the meantime, thanks for being here. You've been great. We'll be right back with more of that awful quiz show after this. John and Greg, they're a woman who collects celebrity garbage and a man who's the world's fastest beer drinker. Say hello to Bill the Fox Foster and Edna Looney, will you?
garbage. Edna, so you collect celebrity garbage, huh? Yes, but I don't call it garbage. I call it antique. <laughs> but what I mean is, before you turn them into antiques, you get them out of the garbage can, right? Yes, I get everything out of the trash. Well, Edna, Edna, when, when you were a little girl growing you up... You were things... little. I was never little. <laughs> Excuse me, and I didn't mean to say that. What I mean is... No, I did mean. What I'm trying to say is, did you ever think one day you'd grow up to, to pick celebrity garbage? Yes, anybody can get Doris Day's picture, but no one can get Doris Day flea collar. Doris Day wears a flea collar? Doris Day dog wear a flea collar. <laughs> you mean you actually have one of Doris Day's dog Yes, dogs, flea I collar? have a few of them, right here. In my bag. That's celebrity garbage? Yes. I swear, when I saw you come on the stage this afternoon, I didn't say anything, but I thought you'd been to Pick and Save. <laughs> brought your groceries. No, I wouldn't bring no groceries on no TV show. Well, you bring your garbage. That's not garbage, that's antique. <laughs> well, what else have you got in that bag? I got this ketchup bottle from Vincent Price. <laughs> and I got a bunch of bras, 43 of them. Vincent Price's bra? <laughs> What's the best time to go out and look for your treasures? The best time is to watch the paper and watch the week when they're getting a divorce. The week that they're getting a divorce, you can find some very interesting things in the trash. The week that Debbie Reno and Eddie Fisher got a divorce, I found six albums. Doris Day? <laughs> Who's garbage right here? Is this in his picture? Oh, I got John Barber. I was looking in his trash. What do you find in John Barber's trash? I found an A incredible t-shirt. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Bill. As the world's fastest beer drinker, have you ever set any records? Yes, I uh, set a record. I drank two jugs to uh, one person's one. When did you do, when did you do that? Oh, I did that uh, last Friday night, last Saturday night. I'm going to do it again this coming Friday and Saturday. What do you do this at? I run a place in Santa Monica called the Fox Inn. I uh, drink beer and play the piano there. When did you, you discover that you had this secret talent? I, uh, I started this one night when I was short on customers and I had a lot of beer left over, so I just <laughs> fell right into it. What's the most beer you've ever drunk in a night? Well, I, don't, I think counting's a sign of weakness, but two customers counted 28, so I drank two more jugs just to show class. So oh, I drink drink must have really been slow that night, huh? Yeah. How many years have you been, have you been doing this sort of over, thing? Over 15 years. That's over 45,000 jugs. That's a lot of beer. Yes, it is. Well, would you give us a demonstration of this ability that you have here, this talent? Yes, if you have a couple of jugs, I'll... Okay, Laura, bring out the jugs. <laughs> okay. Okay, Bill, Laura has two jugs over a pint each. We'll time you. Wait a minute. We'll time you. As soon as you take your first sip, go ahead. Okay. We I do a chant with this. It's called Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. No. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Three seconds. That's fantastic. What does Ziggy Zaggy Ziggy Zaggy Ziggy Zaggy mean? Sa sounds like German for where's the men's room. <laughs> Bill, Edna, it's been great talking to you, but now let's see if we can't win some money playing that awful quiz. As a team, you'll have $500 to start. You'll be asked four questions. You'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 a question. You'll have only eight seconds in which to give us your answer. At the end of the show, if you end up with more money than the other guests, you'll come back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question sent in by a viewer. Your first category happens to do with food. How much will you bet? 200 All right. Okay. How much? 200 For $200... Which of the following foods creates the most gas? Is it lima beans, pinto beans, soybeans, or peanuts? I say, uh, yeah, yeah. We've de uh, decided on pinto beans. I'm sorry. But according to the United States Department of Agriculture, they blame soybeans. <laughs> Your next category, your next category might be a little better. It deals with Richard Nixon, who some people think that beats out soybeans. How much will you bet for Richard Nixon? What's the highest we can bet on him? The highest you can bet is 200. We'll go 100. <laughs> well, 
for $100 in 1954, then Vice President Richard Nixon wrote a note to his wife, Pat, and said one of the following. President Eisenhower should be impeached. <laughs> I'll never run for public office again. Or I'm gonna have a nose job and an operation to remove my sweat glands. <laughs> Which was it? Go ahead, William. I'm pretty sure it's I'll never run again. That's exactly correct. In 1954, according to the Book of Facts, Nixon promised his wife, Pat, that he would never run for public office again. I guess he lied to his family, too. <laughs> you now have $400 and two more questions. And your next question has to do with relationships. How much would you care to bet for relationships? I'm good on those. Okay. Yeah, let's go $200 on that relationship. For $200, which of these people said that whenever I'm alone with a beautiful woman, the devil in me becomes dangerous. Was it Roman Polanski, <laughs> Jimmy Carter, <laughs> Tiny Tim, <laughs> or Billie Jean King? <laughs> you say you know. I know, I know. You gotta think of our host. It's Tiny, okay, time's up. Tiny Tim. That's exactly correct. That was a confession made by Tiny Tim. $600. Your final question is about the first time. How much will you bet? $200. For $200, a world famous musician said he lost his virginity to a chesty 30 year old blonde who sang the blues. Was that musician Lawrence Welk, <laughs> Liberace, or Zubin Mehta? Who was it? What do you think? I don't know. I, I go for Zubin Mehta. Okay. Let's go for Zubin Mehta. That statement was made by Liberace in a book called The First Time. Well, you've ended up with $400. We've had a great time being here with you today. We've learned some valuable information I'm sure that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. And we'll be right back with more of that awful quiz right after this. Thank, Thank you. you very much. John and Greg, say hello to Warren Lyons, who runs a therapy group called The Joy of Singing. And Joy Rippett, founder and owner of Roommate Finders. Joy, we're running a little behind, but you've well, always been a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> but what exactly is Roommate Finder service? We sell roommates. You sell <laughs> We put people together to share living accommodations, um, mainly males and females. It's becoming very popular. That's exactly what I try to do. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, what do you do in the joy of singing a therapy workshop? Well, it's not therapy, John. It's a workshop for anybody who wants to stand alone, sing in front of others without fear, without self-criticism, and with joy. Well, very simple and very powerful. That's great. Joy Warden, we'd love to talk to you longer, but we're running a little late. And we know you'd like to win some money, so let's get on with that awful quiz. You both know the rules, and your first category has to do with recreation. How much would you care to bet? 200. Sure. We're a team. For $200. One of these famous people said, I tried marijuana once, but it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> Was it <laughs> Anita Bryant, uh. John Wayne, the Reverend Jerry Falwell, <laughs> or Ronald Reagan? Who was it? Okay. Who was agreed. It? Anita, Anita Bryant. I'm sorry, but that was said in an interview in his later years by John Wayne. He did, did say that he had tried marijuana. <laughs> did he say that in the high and the mighty? I don't know. Well, your next category has to do with language. How much would you care to bet? Two hundred. Sure. Go. Go How much? We're going to right. Two hundred dollars. Sure. For two hundred dollars, which of the following words was voted the worst sounding word in the English language? Was it flatulence? Soybeans, <laughs> oh. pusillanimous, scab, or cacophony. Which was it? Scab. 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 I'm um, sorry again, but it was cacophony, and it was voted by the National Association of Teachers of Speech. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'd have voted for, you know, for scum. Okay, your third question has to do with holy matrimony. How much would you care to bet? You How only much have, have we got dollars. left? A hundred? We only have a hundred. hundred dollars. Oh, sure, that works. For $100, one of these famous people said, I tried marijuana once, but it didn't do anything for me. 
One of these men said he'd broken nearly all of his marriage vows. Was that person Tom Snyder? <laughs> Former Congressman Wilbur Mills? Pat Boone? Or John Denver? Who was it? Wilbur Mills. I'm sorry, but that was... He told me so. Wilbur told me so. That was said in... He did. He called me last night and said I broke That was said in a People magazine interview by Pat Boone. Now, you don't have any money left, but we do have one more question for you, and we'll play it for a consolation prize. And, right. and the category has to do with famous women in history. Which one of these famous women in history had three breasts? <laughs> Was it King Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn? Was it Joan of Arc, Sarah Bernhardt, or Catherine the Great? Who was it? Oh. Hello, embarrassment. <laughs> Hello, for this I went to college. <laughs> Hello, I'm brilliant. Let's see. It's Sarah Bernhardt. She told me so the other night, too. I'm sorry, but according to a book of lists, it was Anne Boleyn. Really? She, she, also okay. had, she also had six fingers, but King Henry cut off her one head. <laughs> well, well, sorry you didn't win any money. Joy Ward. Thank you very much for playing the quiz. But if you would, help us welcome back the winning couple of the night, Bob Bowden and Beatrice Lightecker with $900. Of course. Wonderful. Welcome back. This bonus $1,000 awful question was sent in by Linda Riddle of West Palm Beach, Florida. Remember, you'll only have eight seconds to answer it. Besides the $1,000, though, what else can they win, Hal? John and Greg, if they answer the bonus awful question correctly, they'll also win an all-expense-paid vacation to Puerto Vallarta. Oh. They'll fly first class on Mexicana Airlines and spend 10 days at the Lush Hotel Camino Real. Good luck. Which one of these men was rumored not to have died while making love? <laughs> was it Earl Flynn, Nelson Rockefeller, Steve Cochran, or John Garfield? Can we have your answer, please? Nelson Rockefeller. I'm sorry, you're wrong. The one rumored not to have died while making love was Earl Flynn. He had a heart attack in his swimming pool, swimming upstream to his girlfriend. <laughs> well, you didn't win the big one, but you do end up with $900. Like I said, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very Thank much you. for playing that awful quiz. And remember, folks, that the easiest thing about doing the impossible is that you have no competition. So think big, and we'll see you later. If you would like to have a question asked on that awful quiz show, send that question plus a source verifying it to that awful quiz show, 915 North La Brea, Hollywood, California, 90038. If we use your question on the air, we'll send you $25 plus an awful t-shirt. Thank <laughs> you.